is my land. The land that fed my mother and her mother before her. But our land can no longer feed those who will come after me. Before the tragedies of climate change and degradation, the land could take care of us. I remember stories that were shared with us as children, that once upon a time our land was filled with endless forests that provided for our needs, that each time we planted our granaries would be flowing with food, but now there is nothing. Now when the wind comes it carries our soils and seeds, when the rain comes our houses are in danger and our land is left at the mercy of flash floods that sweep away everything in sight. Look at the deep gullies that surround us, the cracked soil unable to nurture our seeds. There is less for us to live off and conflict has increased. Everyone is looking for food, work and fodder for their animals. We are going into our neighbor's lands, which is how the fighting starts. When the land can no longer provide for us, we move to seek out our basic needs. We are leaving our homes for the larger towns, and some of us are forced to find food and safety in refugee camps. Historically, our community had peace agreements to settle on the division of resources, but as this become more and more scarce, enforcing disagreements has grown increasingly difficult. When we go to the agrovets, there are few healthy options for our land. Most of what we can find are harmful synthetic chemicals and modified seeds that cannot be saved or reused. It's difficult to find our native seeds and information on organic approaches to farming. How long will we spray pesticides to a land that we till and lay bare for the sun to scorch? Our rivers are running dry. We no longer have the clear springs that used to cut across our lands. Our cattle can no longer feed and there is hardly anywhere to water them. The climate in our world is changing. The rains are unpredictable now. They come too soon or too late. And when they do come on time, they fall in torrents, destroying the market roads. The roads become impassable and disrupt the market chain. Women can't get as much food in as much variety, increasing their vulnerability to violence in the home. This food shortage pushes us to take our daughters out of school to look for food, firewood, water and money for the family and our animals. Denied an education, the girls begin their entry into a series of trapdoors. Slated for forced and early marriage and sexual violence, their lives will continue the cycle of poverty and exploitation that many women experience. This affects the fabric of our community and we cannot address the instability of the community without addressing the land and its life-giving function. Let me start by first telling you the story of the soil and the tree. The soil, just like the tree and just like us, is alive. There are many living organisms found within the soil that create structure and provide nutrients. A large part of this is a fungal network. The fungal network behaves like an internet system, allowing individual trees to communicate with other trees to exchange nutrients, water, and warning signals against diseases and pests. Referred to affectionately as the wood wide web, this network links with other organisms to allow water and nutrients to infiltrate the earth. These organisms are essential to our survival and need conditions conducive to life including shade, water and food, just like humans. That is where the trees come in. They provide materials for building homes and crafts, they are the source of our traditional medicine, they protect the soil from the sun, the wind and from stormwater currents while providing us with food, fodder, fuel, fiber and fertility. Trees impede wind and when they are cut down, this wind carries away the fertile earth. They have a big impact on climate, contributing to evapotranspiration and hence influencing local rain cycles. Trees also provide a habitat for animals and birds that pollinate and protect our crops and seeds guarding them against pests such as mosquitoes and locusts. 
What we can't see is the fact that trees also use the sun's energy, swallowing its bright rays, shedding out sugar, known as exudates, and sucking carbon out of the air where it contributes to climate change and back into the soil where it produces all the food and materials we need. Trees cover the land with a protective blanket of carbon in the form of leaves. This creates a dense sponge that holds nutrients and life-giving water throughout the year. The trees themselves stand tall, with roots sunk deep into the earth. They are protectors that trap and hold water, ensuring it is delivered into cool, deep aquifers so we can have clean, healthy groundwater. It is this web of species that live within the soil that allows us to farm and eat. So if we are to regain our land, peace and stability, then we ourselves have to be like the trees guardians of our soil. If we put measures that allow for our soil to recover, then our ecosystem becomes a biotic pump of life, fertility and resilience directly allowing us and our animals to thrive. We are part of a rich, complex and intelligent system designed over billions of years. We have forgotten we are not separate or different from the nature that surrounds us. We are nature. We are water, we are carbon. We were placed on the earth to work in partnership with nature to protect our living planet so she can protect and sustain us. Let us save those that live beneath the soil and replant our trees and invite the water to remain with us, hydrating our soils and plants. To begin, we can imitate the movement and bunching of large herds across the grasslands by practicing holistic rangeland management or mob grazing so as to regenerate grasses and their root systems. We need to mimic the patterns of our environment, how wild animals such as the zebras and wildebeest moved across the pastures. We will observe how water flows across our land starting from the highest point and design our slopes with the natural patterns, features and contours of the landscape, allowing us to slow the water down, spread it out, sink it deep into the land and store it throughout the year so it can feed our soils. When water has time to collect and soak, the miracle of life becomes activated. We will design our landscapes, farms and grazing areas using various methods of moving the earth and stoneworks such as the construction of bioswales, natural dams, stone check dams, terracing, key line design, and other strategies to hold water in place, allowing it to gently meander and hydrate soils and roots rather than cutting through and draining the landscape of life. By designing the landscape to capture nutrients, the soil is hydrated to reduce drought while managing the energy of the water to minimize the impact of floods. We can practice farmer-managed natural regeneration and strategically prune small branches from growing trees, allowing this to fall to the ground. This is known as chop and drop and functions to increase tree canopy and has the additional advantage of mulching and protecting the soil. We will find the seeds of plants that existed on this landscape those species which, like old friends, have been part of our ancestors' lives. We must ensure to protect our ancient grains, sacred and forgotten foods that have always been adapted to the local conditions and kept us resilient for thousands of years. We can plant and protect as many of our traditional varieties which are adapted to our lands. We will follow the planting practices of our grandparents who protected our soils. Our traditional foods and recipes are fading away and we must bring them back, protect them and ensure our heritage and ancestors are never forgotten. When we till the land, we break the important web of life that behaves like a whole economy exchanging nutrients and water. This wakes up the sleeping seeds of weeds and creates a crusted compact surface that makes it difficult for new seeds to push through. This means that water cannot infiltrate and the soil becomes even more compact and hard, increasing the water runoff, which translates to flash floods and extreme weather events. Our soils, just like in the original forest of this land, 
should be covered in a protective layer of leaves and organic carbon to feed the soil, hold moisture, and keep soil organisms cool so they can do the important work of building healthy, living soils as the foundation of life-giving trees, plants, and grasses. By engineering the landscape the way the trees used to, we are reducing floods and extreme water events while mitigating aridity and hot conditions that lead to drought. Near our homes, we can protect our houses from flooding by designing the landscape to plant the rain. We will use earthworks to capture and manage large flows of water through fell and spill circuits that help to protect from floods and drought. We can turn floods into food by designing to capture flood water into trees and gardens in our homesteads. We can harness all the resources from our homes like water that comes from our rooftops, our kitchen and our clothes washing, making sure to trap it within our farms the same way we trapped it across our lands when the trees and shrubs were still there. This will help to reach out to springs and aquifers so we can have an abundance of water even during the dry season. We will then plant as many varieties of perennial crops which will help our farms and lands to be evergreen. In turn, neither ourselves, our animals or our land will be in luck. When we provide a shaded, cool and moist place that is protected and hydrated throughout the year, we don't need to wait for the rains in order to have crops and food for ourselves and our animals. And slowly, we will see our land restored to how it once was. The soil dark, the land green with trees, the rivers flowing again, and peace reigning among our people. DRC's 2025 strategy highlights regenerative approaches in the context of forced displacement. We recognize the links between ecological health, conflict, economic stability, and food security. DRC uses agroforestry, agroecology, and passive water harvesting through permaculture-based design to help land, people, animals, and natural cycles to be more resilient in the face of climate and weather extremes that contribute to displacement. <laughs>